On this video we're going to create the enemy spawner so we have several enemies appearing on the game stage. So let's go ahead and create a new scene. Let's add a simple node. And we're using a simple node because the only behavior this node will have is spawning the enemies. And that's something we'll have to do from a script which this node can hold. I'm going to rename it spawner enemy. And I'll hit Ctrl S and save it in the scenes folder under the name spawner enemy.tscn. Let's add another simple node. And let's name it container. This node will hold all the enemies we will spawn on the spawner enemy. So we can have them all in one place instead of just throwing them on the scene tree. Let's now on the spawner enemy add a script, which I will save in the scripts folder under the name spawner enemy that gd. Hit create and I will remove all the comments. So in order to instantiate a scene from code, we first need a reference to the scene file we want to instantiate, which in this case is the enemy kamikaze scene. So I will define a constant variable named enemy kamikaze equals to the preload function which returns the resource of a given path. In this case the enemy kamikaze scene is under the scenes folder. So the path will be res semicolon slash slash scenes slash enemy kamikaze dot tscn. Now that we have a reference I will create a function named spawn. And on this function we are going to instantiate the enemy kamikaze scene by saying enemy kamikaze dot instance which returns a node that we will save on the new variable name enemy. And now we just need to add it to the scene tree. So let's get the container node using the function get node passing container as argument. And from it we will call the function add child placing enemy in there. Let's call the function spawn in ready and run the scene to see what we have. And we can see that the enemy gets spawned right away and really out of place. In order to fix that, we have to give the enemy a position and this is how we'll do it. As a simple note, the spawner enemy doesn't have a position. So let's just say this position I'm showing here is the enemy's instance position. Since all enemies are going to be coming down from the top of the view, they are all going to have a fixed y position of 0. But on the x axis, the position is going to be random since we don't want them to be coming out from the same spot. Now the spawn range won't be the whole width of the view. It'll go from 16 to the view's width minus 16. So the enemy doesn't appear out of view. And since the origin position of the enemy sprite is right in the middle, spawning the enemy at 0 on the y axis will make it appear within the view. So to make it look like the enemies are coming from somewhere above, we will have a fixed spawn position on the y axis of 16, so we have it like so. Back to the editor, before adding the enemy to the container node, we are going to declare a variable named pause equals to a vector2. Then we will set pos.x equals to a random range from 0, meaning the left side of the view, plus 16 because of the offset, to the right side of the view, which we can get by saying get viewport dot get visible rect dot size dot width minus 16. And for the y axis, you'll be 0, meaning the top of the view minus 16, so the enemy gets spawned outside the view. And finally, we're going to set the enemy's position to the post variable. Let's give it a shot. And we can see that the enemy gets spawned at a random position. But if we run the game again, we'll see that it appears at the same spot. And that's because we have to manually change the seed the engine uses to generate a random number. And to do so, we just need to call the function randomize. Let's start it again.
and there it is. Now, I have noticed that this is something we'll be using quite often, and I found that quite too long and not very straightforward. So, I have come with this user script that has many functions I use quite often and really simplifies my code. We will be looking at all the functions we need then, but for now, we will focus on this one, which returns the view size. So, I'm going to copy the script into the scripts folder. And in order to have the scripts available from everywhere on our project, we have to make it global. So I'll go to Scene, Project Settings, and on the Auto Load tab, I'll select the Util script, add it, and that should pretty much do it. Instead of saying this, we can now say Util that view size that width which is way more clear, and the same can be done on the chip script. Instead of get global mouse pause that x, we can get it with utils that mouse pause that x. And here we won't need this variable anymore, since we can just use utils that view size that width. Back to the spawner enemy script. Now that we have the spawn function working, we just need to call it over and over again so the enemies keep spawning. And to do so, we just need to run this block of code repeatedly. So I'll place it into a while loop with true as condition so it'll loop infinitely. And to avoid our game from crashing when it gets into this loop, we're going to yield this function so it stops without interrupting the flow of the game. And a nice thing we can do is pass a node and a signal. So the function resumes once the signal gets emitted. And that is when a timer node becomes quite handy. But instead of going through all the trouble of adding it to the scene and setting it up, on the util script, there is a function called create timer. And we just need to specify the wait time in seconds, which I want it to be 0.5 seconds and the signal this function will wait for is timeout. We're going to be looking into signals later, but for now we just need to know that this line of code waits 0.5 seconds and after that the loop runs again, then it waits, and so on. Let's start it out. And there we have it. Now, I don't want the spawning time to always be 0.5 seconds because it'll make the game feel too linear. So, instead of a specific amount of time, we will set a random range from 0.5 to 1.25 seconds. Let's see if it works. And it does. And the spawning doesn't feel so linear. Let's go to the game stage and instantiate the spawner enemy into this scene. Run the game. And there it is. Well guys, that's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and if you like my tutorials and would like to support me, you can do so by making a pledge on my Patreon page. I really appreciate the support. Thanks to all the patrons that have been doing it so far, and until next time, see you later.